Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So I'm going to talk to you about the seven features of the Lord Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter 1. So what you have is the Apostle John is on the Isle of Patmos for the Word of God. And he's taken away in the Spirit. He's taken away in the Spirit. Now let's find out what in the Spirit is talking about. Look at Revelation 1.10. He says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And when John is taken in the Spirit, he's taken up somewhere else. In Revelation 4, 1 through 2, it says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit and beheld a throne was set in heaven and one set on the throne. You see, he was taken somewhere else when he's in the Spirit. Look at Revelation 17, 3. It's even more clear here. Revelation 17 and verse 3. It says, So he carried me away in the Spirit into the wilderness. He carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Look at Revelation 21, 10. 
Revelation 21, 10, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So he carried me away in the spirit. You see that? He's been carried away. Look at Ezekiel 37, 1. Ezekiel 37 and verse 1, he says, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. So you see, Ezekiel 8, 3. Look at Ezekiel 8 and verse 3. It says, And he put forth the form of an hand, and took me by a lock of mine head, and the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north where was the seat of the image of jealousy which, which provoketh to jealousy. So you see how when someone's in the spirit, in this sense as John's in the spirit in Revelation, he's being picked up and taken somewhere. In this case, he says in Revelation 1.10, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And if, if you've been in the Bible for a while, you know the Lord's day is referring to the second coming. It's the day of the Lord. You know, the Lord's day only appears one time in the Bible. A lot of people say it's talking about Sunday, but I mean every day is the Lord's day. It ain't just in that, in that sense, you know, every day is the Lord's day. One man esteemeth one day above another, another man esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be, be fully persuaded in his own mind. But when it comes to the Lord's day here, it's not talking about Sunday. It's the day of the Lord. We say, well, the day of the Lord, the Lord's day, that's different. Well, think about it like this. You have a birthday and you have the day of your birth. It's talking about the same thing. And it, it only makes sense, you know. John, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. John is, is telling you what he saw when it comes to the revelation of Jesus Christ. I mean, he just said uh, up there a few verses earlier, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. He's showing you, he's talking about the second coming, the day of the Lord. And so he's in the spirit on the Lord's day. He's been picked up, carried forward in time, and he's seeing the glorified Lord Jesus Christ right before he comes back in judgment at the second coming. John hears a voice and John turns around to see that voice and it is the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at these seven features of the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 1, 14. It says, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So the number one, his head and his hairs. You know, at the first coming, his head and hairs were covered in his own blood. Not anymore. They were matted with blood and dirt and sweat. Not anymore. Now his head and his hairs are white. And over in Proverbs 16, 31, it says the hoary head, you know, like the gray head, like an older man said, the hoary head is a crown of glory. That, you know, that white hair of an older man, it's a crown of glory. But there's a condition, if it be found in the way of righteousness. You know, you think about some old men in your life and you wonder, where is their wisdom? They've been on the way of death. They've not been on the way of righteousness. They've been traveling on the way of death for a really long time, and, and you can tell. And look at Proverbs 14, 12. Over in Proverbs 14, 12, it says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You know, the hoary head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. If you're on the way of death and you get to be about 60, 70, 80 years old, that's not a crown of glory on your head. I doubt you'll even, probably won't even make it that far. But you see, Jesus Christ, 
that hoary, even the hoary head that he, he has, it's a crown of glory. You know, Jesus Christ is called the Ancient of Days in Daniel 7, 9 through 10. And he has more wisdom than any old man you know. You know, you, you, got, you know a lot of old men that can give you a lot of wisdom, but the Lord Jesus Christ is the Ancient of Days. And 1 Corinthians 1.30 says he is our wisdom. So maybe you are sitting here listening to this and you got some gray hairs on your head. Let me ask you this. Do those gray hairs mean anything? Are you just an old grouch? Are you just an old hag? Are you just an old grumpy old man? Do those gray hairs mean anything? You know, they should represent wisdom. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ, one reason he has white hair he is our wisdom, 1 Corinthians 1.30. But another reason, his head and his hairs are white like wool. White represents purity. In Daniel 12.10, it, it says, Many shall be purified and made white. You know the famous verse, Isaiah 1.18, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And Daniel 7.9 it talks about his garments, and it says they're white as snow. White represents purity. One of these days, you're going to get a glorified body like the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're going to have a white robe. You're going to have you a white robe. Finally, your clothes will show your righteousness. Right now, your clothes don't mean much. But one of these days, you're going to get a white robe like the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's going to show your righteousness. Fine linen is the righteousness of saints, it says. White represents wisdom. White represents purity. White represents judgment. Over in Judges 5.10, Judges 5 and verse 10, it says, Speak ye that ride on white asses. Ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. See that? It says, Speak ye that ride on white asses. Ye that sit in judgment. So, somebody that rides white asses sits in judgment. And what is the Lord Jesus Christ coming back on? A white horse. And the armies in, which are in heaven followed him on white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, you know, you think about those pictures you see of like those old uh, judges. What do they have on? White wigs. That's where they get that from. The judge of all the earth has on has a white head and hairs white like wool. What would those judges wear? And the old pictures you've seen, they put on those long white wigs. White represents judgment. You know, when, when the Lord uh, was, was walking this earth, his head and his hairs, they got covered in sweat, covered in blood, matted with, with blood and dirt. You know, Song of Solomon 5.11 talks about his locks are bushy and black as a raven. Not anymore. Now his head and his hair is white like wool, as white as snow. Number two. Look at Revelation 1, 14 again. It says, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Eyes as a flame of fire. That's number two. You know, there's a common saying when somebody gets really angry and looks like they're going to beat you up. The common saying is, He had fire in his eyes. Well, that's the Lord Jesus Christ because, you know, John's been in the spirit on the Lord's day, he's been taken forward in time and he's seeing the Lord Jesus Christ right before he comes back at the second coming. And he had his eyes are like a flame of fire. You know, when Jesus Christ was here the first time, in John eleven thirty five, 35, it says, Jesus wept. That's what you saw in his eyes. But not here. Now, the inhabitants of the earth are going to weep because of him. Up there in Revelation 1, 7, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, 
and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Jesus wept the first time. The inhabitants of the earth are going to weep and wail this time. In Song of Solomon 5.12, it said, His eyes are like dove's eyes. Not anymore. Now his eyes are as a flame of fire. And, you know, they got the saying, If looks could kill. John turns to see the voice that spake with him. And John falls at his feet as dead. When Jesus Christ comes back again with fire in his eyes, with looks that could kill, um, there's not going to be any crucifying him again. But let me show you another feature, the third feature of the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 1.14, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet, like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So, feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. That's the third one. I got to thinking, and you know, hell is like a furnace of fire. And Jesus took our hell on the cross. And uh, down there in Revelation 118, he says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Jesus Christ walked through hell for you. You know, I believe that, you know, it says he's got the keys of hell and death. I believe that death is a place, and I believe there is a person named death. Over there in Revelation 6, 8, it says this in Revelation 6 and verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sit on him was death, and hell followed with him. You know, it talks about death like it's, like it's an actual person. And then Jesus says he's got the keys of hell and of death. You know, I believe uh, when Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and was buried, he went down to the heart of the earth for three days and three nights, and he faced our biggest enemy. Obviously, the devil and death. And the, the devil at that time had the power of death. But the Lord defeats him and yanks his keys away from him. That's the most epic victory in the Bible. Jesus walked through death and hell and defeated them both. 1 Corinthians 15, 26 talks about how the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And you see in Acts 2, 31, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, it says his soul was not left in hell. He, his, his flesh didn't seek eruption. He came right back up. In Ephesians 4, 8 through 10, it tells you what the Lord was doing for those three days and three nights that he was buried look at ephesians 4 ephesians 4 and verse 8 it says wherefore he saith when he ascended up on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men now that, that he ascended what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. So you see, he descended down into the lower parts of the earth during those three days and three nights. And he defeated death. He defeated hell. That's why, possibly, his feet are like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. What's the Lord referred to the lake of fire as. I mean, I know hell and the lake of fire are different, but, but what does he refer to the lake of fire as? A furnace of fire. You know, this also represents judgment. judgment. Brass, like the brazen altar, it represents judgment. Where they would uh, burn the sacrifices for their sins, it represents judgment. So his feet are like unto fine brass as if they burned. Burning something represents judgment. And those same feet 
that are like unto fine brass if they burned in a furnace. Well, in Habakkuk 3.12, it talks about how he's going to thresh the heathen in anger. In uh, Romans 16.20, it says, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. You ever heard the saying, they get stomped, or he's going to get stomped? Well, these feet like unto fine brass are going to march through the land in indignation, and the enemy is going to get stomped. But back to Revelation 1, 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. There's the first feature. His eyes were as a flame of fire. There's the second feature. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. There's your third feature. And his voice as the sound of many waters. There's your next one. Number four, voice as the sound of many waters. And this voice sounds like a trumpet. Look up a few verses. When John first hears the voice, he says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. This is the voice that he turns around to see. John turns to see it in verse 12. He says, and I turned to see the voice. He turned to see the voice that spake with him. Didn't say he turned to see who this is that's speaking with me. It says he turned to see the voice. Just like in Genesis 3, 8, after Adam and Eve had sinned, it says, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. It's the same voice. It's the same person. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. It's the Word. The voice sounds like a trumpet. The voice sounds like thunder. In Job 40 and verse 9, it says, Canst thou thunder with a voice like him? In Psalm 77, 18, it says, the voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. In Psalm 104, 7, it says, At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. You see, to Elijah, he was a still, small voice. In 1 Kings nineteen twelve. not here. He thunders here. At the cross, he opened not his mouth. Isaiah 53, 7. When he was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. But here, he's got the voice as the sound of many waters. It talks about him. He's going to come roaring. And I forgot to write that, that reference down. But he, he comes wailing. He comes roaring. And it's not going to be a pretty sight if you're on the receiving end of it. You know, at the first coming, he opened out his mouth. Now, he's got the voice as a sound of many waters. You know, before his, his uh, feet were walking on water, his feet were walking this earth for you, feeling the pain on his feet from walking everywhere. Now he's got feet like under fine brass, as if they burn in the furnace. Now it's the voice as a sound of many waters. The fifth thing, look at verse 16, Revelation 1 and verse 16. And he had in his right hand seven stars. So that's the fifth thing. In his right hand are seven stars. You see, at the cross, his hands had nails in them. And he keeps the nail prints. You know, what did Thomas do? He said, you know, and if I don't touch the, if I don't feel the nail prints in his hands and in his side, I won't believe. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ and his glorified body let him do that very thing. I believe he's kept the nail prints. And just like it says in Revelation 1, 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. You know, when he comes a second time, they're going to look upon him whom they have pierced. He had nails in him the first time. But now he's got seven stars 
in his right hand. And you're like, well, what's seven stars? Well, you just, you see the Bible interprets itself. Look down in Revelation 120. It says, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. So that's pretty easy. The seven stars are the seven are the uh, angels and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. But these hands that are holding these seven stars, these are the hands that formed the dry land according to Psalm 95.5. Job 26.13 says, His hand hath formed the the crooked serpent. John 9, 6, his hand touched the blind man with clay and spittle. John 10, 28, it says, no man can pluck us out of his hand. He's done a lot with those hands. And here, he has in his right hand seven stars. Stars in the Bible many times refer to angels. Now the next one, look at Revelation 1.16. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. The mouth goes a sharp two-edged sword out of his mouth. You see, John is seeing Jesus Christ right before the second coming. If you've been doubting this far, I mean, how could you doubt it now? His mouth got a sharp two-edged sword coming out of it. Look at Revelation 19, 11 through 15. This is the second coming here when Jesus Christ comes back. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. That matches Revelation 1. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. There's your white. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. So you see, Jesus Christ coming back in a judgment. Out of his mouth goes a sharp two-edged sword. And the sword from his mouth is the word. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. He opens his mouth here in uh, Revelation 1. And he says to John, you know, John turns to see the voice that speaks with him. And when John turns to see the voice that speaks with him, he falls at his feet as dead. But, and it says in Revelation 1, 17, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And the Lord takes his right hand and puts it on John. Isn't that an amazing thing? John fell at his feet as dead. The Lord just takes his right hand, puts it on John. And he opens his mouth here. That mouth that's got a sharp two-edged sword. He opens his mouth and he says, fear not. He says, fear not. If you fear God, you won't fear men. And if you fear, fear men, you're never going to fear God. But he says, fear not. You know, John showed that he feared the Lord. But at the same time, there's a balance to it. You fear God, but also the Lord's the one that keeps you from being afraid. He's the one that keeps you from fearing men. He's the one that keeps you from being afraid when you're when you're not when you know when you're supposed to be bold and confident and brave. He keeps you from being afraid. And he says, Fear not. I am the first and the last. Here's some more I am's of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you got the, they say seven I am's. I think I had eight of them over there in John. Here's just some more I am's. I am the first and the last. He says, I am he that liveth and was dead. 
No, Jesus is the first and the last. He said, I am the first and the last. That's because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He's the first and the last because He is God. He's the beginning of everything, and He's the end of everything. He says, I am he that liveth and was dead. You know, he voluntarily died, voluntarily laid down his life for us. But now he's alive. He says, and behold, I am alive forevermore. So this, he says seven things here. Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, number four, and behold, I am alive forevermore. There's your fourth thing. I am alive forevermore. He's never going to die again. He only once suffered for sins, only had to die one time. Number five, and have the keys of hell and death. He's got the keys. Why are you worried about, worried about going to hell? You're in his hand, and he's got the keys. Number five, he says, right. He says in Revelation 18, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Have the keys of hell and of death. Revelation 119, write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. So he said, he tells John to write. And then the seventh thing he says is him giving the interpretation of what John saw which is Revelation 120, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So seven things he says here is number one, fear not. Number two, I am the first and the last. Number three, I am he that liveth and was dead. Number four, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Number five, and have the keys of hell and death. Number six, write the things which thou hast seen. And number seven, he gives the interpretation. That's what went out of his mouth in Revelation 1, along with that sharp two-edged sword that's going to be, that John saw, that's going to be coming out in Revelation 19. Now, like I said, at his first coming at the cross, he opened not his mouth. But now out of his mouth, it's a sharp two-edged sword. Out of his mouth came that voice that sounds like many waters, that sounds like a trumpet. And then the last thing, his countenance. Look up there at verse 16. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Countenance as the sun. You know, it kind of reminds me of Moses. He had to put the veil over his face because it was glowing so much it was, it, the ch children of Israel couldn't even look at him. And when Jesus Christ was on the Mount of Transfiguration, he, he was shining like the sun. And you know, everything that you can't see, the Lord has something that pictures that well, obviously the s-u-n son is a picture of the son of god you know it rises it's the light of the world and it even calls him in malachi 4 and over there in malachi 4 and verse 2 it says but unto you that fear my name shall the son capital s you in shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. The son of righteousness. His countenance is as the sun shineth in his strength. What does the sun do? It burns. It's, it's on fire. When Jesus Christ comes back at the second coming, he's on fire. Second Thessalonians 1 8 talks about inflaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God. Malachi refers it to a day that shall burn as an oven. He's going to burn them all up because he's coming back in a judgment. That's what John's seeing. John is in the spirit on the Lord's day. He's been took forward in time 
and he sees the Lord Jesus Christ, head in his hair is white like wool. White represents judgment. He sees his eyes as a flame of fire. Fire represents judgment. He's got fire in his eyes. If looks could kill, you know. Number three, he sees the feet like undefined brass as if they burned in a furnace. Brass, like the brazen altar, that represents judgment. The furnace, that represents judgment. Number four, voice as a sound of many waters. Sounds like a trumpet, sounds like thunder. That's showing you judgment. Number five, he has in his right hand seven stars. Number Number six, out of his mouth goes a sharp two-edged sword. Just like in Revelation 19, 11 through 15. When he comes back at the second coming, he's got a sharp sword coming out of his mouth. And then the last one, the, his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Seven features of the Lord Jesus Christ, the glorified Lord Jesus Christ, all suited up, ready to come back at the second coming, ready to come back and take over.